Hey friends, I know not all of you listen all the way through the end credits of every episode, so I just wanted to give you a quick plug that you can find every episode of The Distiller, as well as photos, links, and more information on our website at thedistillerpodcast.com. If you enjoy these conversations about meaningful work, please tell your friends about it by sharing our posts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And finally, if you'd like to help support this work, just look for the Become a Patron button on the website to learn more about how you can help us make more. Thanks. At some point in writing a review of a restaurant, I always have that feeling like, aren't we lucky? I mean, a good restaurant makes you feel that you're lucky. Yeah. You know, I'm so lucky to be here. I'm Brandon Dawson, and this is The Distiller, a podcast about how we find meaningful work and how we find meaning in the work we do. My guest for this episode is Polly Campbell. Polly is the food and dining writer for the Cincinnati Inquirer. Now, when you hear food and dining writer, you may immediately think restaurant critic. And although that's not wrong, that's just a piece of what Polly does. People ask me all the time how we find the guests for the distiller. Sometimes they're referrals, sometimes they reach out to us or are suggested by friends, listeners, or other guests. But sometimes I just reach out cold and ask somebody if they'd like to be on the show. Polly was one of those cases. We'd never met, and as far as I knew, she'd never heard of the show. But when I emailed her asking if she'd like to talk about her work, she quickly responded, not only in the affirmative, but also said she had a lot of thoughts on the subject, which I loved. So needless to say, I was eager to hear Polly's story, her thoughts on her work, and to delve into what it means to be a local journalist, to balance the need to be accurate and fair in writing about a city's restaurant and food scene, with the knowledge that what you can write will have a direct impact on someone's business and their livelihood. Polly and I talked about that and much more, as you'll hear. We met at one of my new favorite places in Cincinnati, Mominum Coffee in Camp Washington. Mominum, as in mom and them. A great local coffee house that also serves beer and wine. What a concept. It's one of the businesses owned by the Ferrari brothers, who, if you'll recall, are also the team behind Fausto at the CAC, the restaurant that hosted episode 44 with designer Jason Snell. Their mother, Teresa, is the mom behind Mom and and despite the quirky name, the coffee, the wine, and the vibe are all top-notch. Polly and I tucked into a little alcove in the hallway of the old house that Mom and resides in. We sipped a little rosé, and we dove into a discussion of work, purpose, meandering career paths, and stumbling into what you love. Here is my conversation with the Cincinnati Inquirer's food and dining writer, Polly Campbell, on The Distiller. Let's start off with um, you just telling me what your work is in your own words. Well, I guess I'd call it the dining writer for the Cincinnati Inquirer, which is also Mm Cincinnati.com. I write about restaurants. The little tag on my job is... I help people find good places to eat, and I tell stories about people who feed us. Great. So it's not food anymore. It's not recipes cooking at home. It's just eating out and and what people around Cincinnati are doing. Okay. Now, you mentioned to me that you had an interesting story about how you got into that that was maybe not the, uh, whatever the standard route would be to get into that. Yeah. I I think, you know, people often ask me that, and I... (laughs) It's there is no standard way to get into it, I guess. You <laughs> that know, like was, that was part of that, my question. That's the thing. You can't go to school and get a master's degree in restaurant reviewing. Um, I've always, all my life, I was confused about what I should do. Just, I dropped out of college because I couldn't imagine myself doing anything after college. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I was just like, what's the point of this? I don't know what I can do. Right. I. Graduated from college, I moved to New York. I had a job I thought I liked. I kind of quit that one. Then I had another job I kind of thought I liked. Tell me what those jobs were. Well, the first job was um, working at Viking Penguin Books. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was how I got through college finally. Like, I'm an English major. That is who I am, really. And I thought I could work in book publishing. And that happened. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, but I you, quit doing that to do something else. Uh, worked in a, res- a neighborhood restoration company in Queens. Okay. Um, and then I got to Cincinnati, which was by reuniting with an old college boyfriend and mm-hmm. literally making a list of places we could live because I didn't want to live in New York anymore and I didn't want to live in my hometown of Bloomington, Indiana anymore. Uh-huh. We literally made a list of cities where we could live and we crossed them off. Cincinnati was the last one on it. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. And can I ask how long you've been in Cincinnati? Uh, since 1983. Okay. So 30-something years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. 
He said, well, if we don't like it, we'll leave. But mm-hmm. I don't know. We both found jobs we liked. But then I, um, I quit again. Yeah. <laughs> I worked at Writer's Digest, okay. where a lot of people work who are into words and so on. And, you know, they publish books about how you can be a freelance writer. Mm-hmm. So after a year and a half of reading all these books that we published, I'm like, oh, I guess I'll be a free. I think I could do this. <laughs> so, I'm going to take my own advice. I know. It's, I don't know. I just was bopping around. So I did freelance write for a while. Mm-hmm. And, and it was okay. I, was, I, I had did some things in that period that I'm pretty proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did stuff like book indexes and proofreading and so on. And then I had... A daughter, and I kept doing it uh, for a while. Then I had another daughter, and really that was so much more fun and appealing to hang out with them yeah. than it was to hustle jobs mm-hmm. that I kind of didn't do very much of it for a while. But so here's the thing that I did that I that I like to talk about because I think it's very. I, I'm not saying everybody should do this, but it's just an instructive thing. Um, I'd been sort of writing a little bit here and there, but I knew I wanted to be a writer, but I didn't know what I wanted to be a writer, what kind of writer, what I wanted to write about. And I thought, well, what do I care about? Well, I care about food, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I had worked in restaurants. I thought I was going to go to the Culinary Institute of America, but I never never handed in the rest of my (laughs) application. (laughs) It was a little hapless. But um, so I started writing about food. And I I did this thing where I just wrote about my life. I I basically wrote a biography of myself through food or not a biography. Yeah, yeah. the, the dishes that meant something to me and why. And I'd write about... You wrote this for who? Just for me, yourself? Me, for okay. myself. I Great. just did it. Um, I wrote about like how my mother used to make this cottage cheese dish with all these vegetables in it. It's delicious with cucumbers and stuff. And she would do that just for herself hmm. while the six kids were just eating whatever else you know but she took the time to make that for herself and as I wrote about that I thought about her and her life and what that meant or I wrote about um this raspberry tart I'd had in France that I'd you know had been this like I love that though yeah and and so it 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 was fun I love thinking about myself and you know so did you publish that oh no 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 no. (laughs) I mean it sounds great I did not have much follow through okay but that's okay it didn't really need to be published I I don't think that's what it was about Mm -hmm. Um, and so at some point, uh, city beat started, Mm -hmm. they started up there brand new. I thought, I bet they could use some writing about food. Mm -hmm. So I went and talked to them and they're like, sure, we, you can write about food for us. Yeah. So I wrote about stuff that I, I started writing the similar kinds of things, sort of about myself or about food experiences that are meaningful. I wrote about picking berries that you pick farms around Cincinnati or finding the best pie or things like that. And, um, then they, that was my first, well, no, that's not true. But it was, so then they wanted more like restaurant stuff. And I write, wrote more restaurant reviews. Okay. And one day the Inquirer called me mm-hmm. and said they had just broken apart a job into food, like cooking and food and yep. into dining. Okay. And I'm, I mean, I'd been sitting around thinking, I miss having colleagues. I need a job. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Come on. No. But I don't want a full-time job. That would be a drag, you know. <laughs> And I want a job where there's interesting people and I get to do something really cool mm-hmm. and, and, you know, maybe work with people and maybe not get paid too badly. And the phone, call, the phone rings and they say, we would like you <laughs> to come work for us. It's sorry, it's part time, but it pays this. And I'm like, oh, good. Not, you know, pretty good. And, yeah. and like, you can come work in the newsroom if you want, or you can work at home. It's all up to you. And I'm like, Perfect. I'm like, Oh, thanks. I'll think about it. And I literally had to like count to 10 before I called back. So yeah, 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 I think I would be interested in that. I love it. So to me, it's the story. The reason I like to tell people that story is it's really kind of the do what you love, the money will follow. Mm-hmm. And I never, I actually read a book called that while I was in the middle of throw the, trying to figure stuff out. And I'm like, oh, come on. This isn't true. And, and I know if you say, if I say that story, I can remember exactly how I would have felt back when I was struggling with what I was going to do with my life, if I'd heard this story, like, oh yeah, right. Like that's going to happen to me. But still you will never get to do what you love if you don't do it. Right. And the money might follow in some strange, unexpected way. Mm -hmm. Um, But people will call me and say, I want to be a restaurant reviewer. What should I do? And I said, I say, well, what have you written? And they're like, well, 
I don't know, stuff, maybe. I'm not nothing really. I'm like, okay. I just like food. Yeah, call me back. I'm passionate about food. I'm like, mm -hmm. honey, everybody's passionate yeah. about food. Yeah, yeah. You know, but call me back when you've written about food. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only answer right. to whatever it is you want to do. Start doing it. Do it. That's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, so, I love that. That is my lesson. Well, it's an encouraging <laughs> lesson for me. I'm uh, I, I'm the same person. I've never the reason I do this show is because I've never known what I wanted to do. Oh, when and you're I trying to find and get some hints. <laughs> it, 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 maybe subtly. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually just really enjoy listening to other people talking about their process, yeah. and it's encouraging yeah. along the way. I mean, I was 40, and my kids were in fourth and second grade when I got the part time job at the Enquirer. Yeah. It's now. It's been full time for years, but yeah. So. No, yeah, that was great, 23 I mean, years ago. I think a lot of people at 40 think if I haven't figured it out yet, mm -hmm. you know, I've missed the boat or it's too late to, right. to do something. I thought so. that at 25, yeah, which was I, really stupid. Well, and that's what work culture tells yeah, us is you have to you have it figured out and you can't change it. And you have to have one plan and it has to be linear. And Well, and that's, that's another thing that I really feel is really important and that you learn as you grow. You've got to do it your own way. Mm -hmm. I had to do it the poly If way. you're going to be happy. If you're yeah. Gonna, yeah. And you can't say, well, here's the five steps to becoming a food writer. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, and I, I got into that. I got, I got sort of into that. Like, well, if you can't, if you don't have, maybe not about being a food writer, because I didn't know I wanted to be a food writer. Yeah, right, right. But other things, it's like, you know, they say you have to live in this city or have this degree or do these things and have, and like, well, or you can do it your own way. Right. And that's, that's hard, but it's, you have to do it that way. And it's, uh, yeah. and that's not the way you do it until somebody does it that way. And right. Exactly. Becomes, yeah. The way. And then you can tell everybody else to do it that right. way. Right. And, and then you have your, then you can write your book about how to <laughs> exactly. follow your dreams. Yeah, exactly. So tell so. us a little bit about the mechanics of what you do, because okay. I think, I think, um, Initially, I think a lot of people would think, well, you're, you're, you're a restaurant critic. But I go to restaurants. At, but you do more than that. I do, yes. You, you do quite a bit more than that. Yes, you do restaurant critique, but you but, also do the general food writing that you were talking about. I do you, story. Yeah, I do stories about people, right. So um, let's start with maybe how do you, how do you determine story ideas, whether, okay. they be, whether they be restaurant? Oh, my gosh, they just come flooding in. They, there are so many people doing so many cool things around food. That there's so many stories that want to be told. Okay. Um, and I look for ones that, you know, try to, I mean, I try to write about things that other people haven't written about. Mm -hmm. I try to write about people who, can, who seem to be on their way to something. Yep. You know, like when the first time I heard that there's a woman named Renee Kerner who is ranching caviar, paddlefish caviar in Kentucky Lakes. Wow. I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to tell that story. <laughs> I hope she has not talked to anybody else. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and stuff like that. Or I'll just come across people or I'll notice trends. Mm -hmm. Like lately, I mean, this is really amazing. I have met so many people lately who are from Cincinnati, who left, worked somewhere else, mm -hmm. and have come back. For instance, and this to place. To open a restaurant. Yes. Yep. The Ferrari guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it's really, that is cool. And so that is something. But as far as restaurant reviews, which yep. I still do, I don't do them quite as religiously as I used to. Um, although I should because there's more restaurants opening. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty simple. Like, I just try to keep track of anything that's new. I try to cover the entire reading area of mm -hmm. the Enquirer, which is like seven counties or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't just write about over the Rhine. Okay, you yeah. know. Yep. Um, and just hope to find, you know, I try to mix it up and have some sort of cheaper restaurants. And every once in a while, I'll go back to some of the finer dining ones, some of the ones that people really, you know, are proud of. I like to is that all? Sure still is that all your, your call? Yeah. You, you make the decision about what you're going to write about? Yes. Do you? Nobody, everybody else is too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you not, do you specifically uh, not write about a place that you know you're not, going to have anything positive to say about, or are you, uh, okay. I mean, the responsibility of a critic is an interesting yes. thing. That's right. Well, people love a good negative restaurant. Review. Absolutely. Um, and every once in a while I'll go visit, I'll go to some new chain restaurant so I can do that <laughs> without feeling bad. So you can throw some mud. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, because that feeling bad is part of it. I mean, if, oh. you, if you have a soul, then you know that you're negatively affecting somebody's right. business by writing an honest review if it's not good. Yeah. Well, here's how I've worked. Uh, so early on, like maybe my fifth restaurant review, I went to some place on the east side. It was on Clough Pike. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was very good. 
and I wrote this review. It started out with all these jokes about how you pronounce Clough Pike. <laughs> you know, is it clow like bow? Is it cloth like cough? Is it, you know, it was really gratuitous and silly. <laughs> and then I said, and by the way, this restaurant is sitting very good. I don't mm-hmm. like it. And the owner called me and, you know, I was feeling like, like right. yeah, I, I, yeah. And the owner called me and he's like, I don't, you know, I took a second mortgage on my house to mm. open this restaurant. Right. And I just, you know, I thought, well, I'm, I'm, thank you for calling me. Um, this is instructive to me and I will think about it going forward. Um, my, now my, the thing is, as a journalist, you know, I think people get this wrong. My responsibility is to my readers. That's mm-hmm. who I care about. That's who my loyalty to. That's who I, who I'm writing for. Uh, yep. It's not my job to promote restaurants. Yep. It's not my job to, you know, um, but what I've realized over time is that although I always know I'm right, um, I lots of people like lots of different restaurants. Yeah, taste is a thing. Yeah, and you know they shouldn't like those. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> but but, and I don't want to just say you know there's a sort of kind of critique you can do that's sort of like, um, if you like this sort of thing, you're going to like this place. Sure. You know, and like, I don't like it, but how well do they do it? You know, right. they do this how thing do they well, do this it may thing. not my, right. be my thing. And my, yeah. my, what I've kind of redefined my job as is to help people figure out what restaurants they want to go to. Hmm. And so, so I'm not above saying, you know, I really the service, you know, come on, or, you know, whatever. But I, it's rare that I write a completely negative review yep. because I, I, and I, you know, people, sometimes people are like, oh, you should let them have it. And I understand that. And, and there's something kind of fun about that. And there's something kind of important about the job that, you know, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't realize it, but I've been in it for the long haul and, um, I don't want to, I don't want to get cheap hits. Yeah. So sometimes I, I think I've gotten soft. I do think that sometimes other times I think, no, I'm just, I'm people read it. People will read the same review and say, Oh, that sounded great. I really want to go there. And someone else will say, well, that's not on my list. Right. And so then, you know, I feel like people are getting the information. I'm a consumer reporter. I'm giving them information in the form of a review and I don't know. I think it works pretty well. Has that changed over the time that you've been doing this? Because blogging, the internet, critique culture, now what people are calling cancel culture, mm-hmm. everybody feels so empowered to shut down the thing that they don't like. Yeah. Is that, is that changed for you at all? No, I think it's just been more of a process for me just getting more humble about it. I mean, all that other stuff is is annoying at the edges, and I, I yeah. I've never quite figured out how to how to deal with it. Um, but I don't want to be like a person on Yelp who's like, right, oh, you know, they spilled the sauce in my takeout bag. You know, and, you know, and stuff like One that. One star. And then, yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I want to write a satire of Yelp reviews sometimes. But that would be but, a good book. I would yeah, write yeah, book. yeah. But um, I mean, I'll be writing. Uh, a review and I'll be going into some detail of service. Service is the hardest thing mm-hmm. to write about, I think, because people really care about it. But yeah. they do. The, there's a lot of, um, sorry, Karen, but a lot of Karens out there. <laughs> and, you know, and 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 they're, they love Yelp. Yeah. You know, and I do not want to be a Karen. I, you know, I am not like, oh, you know, come, you know, come on. It's yeah. ridiculous. I'm just not like that. As a real person, I just eat in restaurants and I'm happy they bring me some food. You know, I right. really am. And so, of course, I, that's not my, you know, I have to call things out. But yeah, you're not setting out to to be negative about something. And I don't, and servers, I mean, that's hard. You know, that's that hard server, work. It, 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 and yeah. it's very hard to get good servers now. Um, but if I just feel like the the whole vibe of the place is that they just don't care whether you have a good meal or right. not, that's what I would talk about. Yeah. Or, if they clearly train their waiters to say something really annoying, um, like, <laughs> <laughs> like for instance, <laughs> oh, you know, like, absolutely. I, I, what's the thing they say? Like, 
you know, no problem or you know, I don't want to get into that because those yeah. are the kind of things that yeah. people complain about. And they and, and I'm writing this. And I'm thinking, oh, for God's sake, this is your job, you right. know, complaining about what the server says to you. What when somebody they serve was you trained some to do, what food. their boss yeah. requires them to do. So I look at service on a pretty broad level when, I, when I'm writing reviews. So, so in, in general, and I want to talk about sort of the mechanics, uh, the, the bigger picture, but specific to that, are there... Is there a checklist of things that you look for? Is it, or is it overall experience oh, when it's you go all, into a place? It's the gestalt, you yeah, know, yeah. and it really is. I, I have done so many things. You know, we have a, a rating system. It's mm -hmm. changed. I used to have, I created all these checklists for things and given numbers of different things. I mean, I tried to make it like scientific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the end, I'd look at that. I go, well, that's not right. I think it's really a four star, you know? Right. Did and I have I, a good experience or yeah, not? Yeah, it's like, there's several things. Is there, there are, in my mind, there are like four things that mm -hmm. are important. One, like I said, do they seem to care that you're there and yeah. they really want you to have a good time? Yeah. And that can be at a cheapo diner or a fancy restaurant. Mm -hmm. That That's just a... That's just a way that they are good servers. Yeah. The other one is, I sort of feel like you can either be very creative with your food or you can do um, standard food really well. Right. So either of those is good, you mm -hmm. know, whichever one it is, but standard food done bad is the worst one. Mm -hmm. it, well, maybe experimental food done bad. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Either one done <laughs> yeah, bad is bad. Right, of course. But you know, it's like, it's not like you have to have something brand new I've never had before on your menu if you're a no. steakhouse or a sandwich store or something, but you have some, some bring some freshness to it. Yeah. And it has to have some kind of personality. This yeah. is what you have to walk in and say, or oh, by the time you've eaten your meal, say, oh, I understand why this restaurant exists. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you don't understand that, or it's clearly somebody thinks they could make some money. Yeah. And if it doesn't have some person's, some person's life mm -hmm. in it, you know, then- Some soul to it. Yeah, some, some yeah. yeah. Yep. And and that for a long time I was like, oh, I'm never gonna, you know, once you have your second restaurant, I'm not reviewing it, sort of, you know, like chains don't generally have that. Right. And yet, Lately, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that because I think that the, the soul of a restaurant is the sum of a lot of small things yeah. that, that you do right. And so um, you don't have to be like a little soulful hole in the wall to have it, have your own distinct personality that's yeah. of interest. To, so, enjoy, to enjoy a place. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's things I, there's a, certain things I really don't like or things that, um, people do and I can't think of any right now obviously but uh, you know that would put me off like that I could say like oh if you do this then yeah you know you, that's a, you've lost me it's a deal breaker and yeah and there are some things kind of like that but mostly it's those it's those things do you have because I know that I've I've had meals in fantastic sittings settings Mm -hmm. that I've not enjoyed because I've not been in the right frame of mind. Yeah, Do you right. have like a, a process that you go through to sort of ensure that you're not poisoning your experience by the rest of your day? Um, I, I do notice that who I'm with makes a big difference. And I invite friends or mm -hmm. you know, my kids are in town, they go with me or my husband. Um, and you know what I really could write a book about is how to have a good conversation. Hmm. I would <laughs> and, love that. Yeah. I, I yeah. have so many, so many thoughts and lessons on that. But, um, but you know, sometimes you're with somebody and I have a friend, Lynn, who will go out to eat with me anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. like I say, I got to go to this, you know, terrible place on the far west side <laughs> and we'll go. And she says, oh, you took me here before, you know, and she'll always go. But so I, I try to make sure she gets some good ones in there. And when she loves food, she just loves it. And mm. it's so great to be with her. She doesn't, she, she, I don't like to eat out with people who think they're experts because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that just muddies the water for me. But she just, if she likes it, she's like, oh, this is so great. Oh, I'm just, this makes me so happy. You know? So she's always a good person to go out nice. with. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, not, and, and I try to notice this because sometimes I do walk in, I sit down and I'm just, you know, I, you just are not going to be able to please me in a way. <laughs> just not necessarily. You know, not necessarily for anything else that happened, but maybe something yeah, yeah. that happened as you walked in. Right. I, yes, I'm aware of those things, and I try to be objective. Mm -hmm. I, I do try. Yeah, know? I mean, and that's, I think I can. I don't know. I, I used to have a conversation with a, a group of friends. Do we do? Do you still cultivate the ability to be amazed? Do you cultivate sort of an optimism about an experience that oh, you're going to walk into? And it seems like that, in in anything that's sort of a value judgment, where mm -hmm. you're putting a judgment on that, that's an important 
quality to cultivate. Oh, yes. You know, I actually said that in a review the other day. I said something like, and I think I didn't publish this review, but I think I said something like, okay, I know it's like a lot to ask for me to still be amazed and delighted by every place I go in. And I'm not. But I am amazed and delighted at a lot That's of places. Great. Because going out to eat is so great. You yeah. know, it's like somebody has created this great world for you. You're going to sit down. The newspaper's going to pay for it. You know, <laughs> you're with your friends. <laughs> Even better. You can order wine. You know, right. and, and sometimes it's just so, it's still... So much fun. And restaurants yeah. know how to create an entrance, then that's really great. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. even under the worst of circumstances, somebody is preparing you a meal. Yes, they are taking away the dirty dishes and washing them back in the kitchen. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. So there are times when I'm like, oh, my God, I can't do this again anymore, ever. Yeah. Uh, but when it's good, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. So we talked about the critique aspect. What is yeah. the rest of what you do? And how do you make the decisions about the rest of what you're going to cover and write about? And um, Sometimes people tell me what to do on that in that situation. You might have an editor that says we need something about yeah, this. Yeah, there's, you know, we now, since we're online, we have lots mm -hmm. of, lots and lots of metrics about what does well. Right. And, and so, yes, I may have to do some things that I'm not all that crazy about because they do well and that's fine. That's part of my job. One do, thing Do that, you want to uh, yeah, reveal one, what does well that yeah, you don't particularly one, care to write about? Lists. Oh, yeah. Best of. Yeah. Um, Gotta have the headline. You, yeah. And, you know, I... I keep saying, look, I don't know what's the best taco in town is. There's a lot of good tacos in town. They're like, oh, just, just write the list. You know, yeah. I mean, it really is. You got to you got to come up with this is the most amazing best taco. I discovered this incredible right. taco, right, right, right. you know, and these other ones are pretty good, too. But, you know, so I always fool around with that a lot. The way I introduce it or I make categories <laughs> or whatever. Something to <laughs> yeah. allow you to. Yeah. 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 But that's OK. It's fun to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes it's way uh, too much food to eat. Yeah. And I have to really plan it over a lot of To eat every time. every yeah. taco in town. Do you know how many tacos there are in this town? There's a lot of tacos yeah. in this town these days. And <laughs> so, I, I love, and there might I love be tacos. A, there might be a great one that you don't know about. You got to try it. So oh, that yeah. that's one thing. And, um, oh, it is fun to see what does well and what doesn't. You know, headlines make a big difference. And, um, you know, people like positive, very, very, they don't like me saying, well, there's some good tacos in town. Mm -hmm. They like awesome taco or I had the worst taco ever, you know. Right. It's got to be on the edges. Yeah, those those things do Best well. Best or worst. I, I, you right. know, I, everything, I, I, it's it's not like everything else sinks, but uh, that is those are things that, that do. No, well. and yeah. clicks are yeah. driving. They're not clicks. They're page views. And page. we have other metrics as well. <laughs> we have, you know, I can tell, my own personal favorite metric is mm -hmm. I can tell how long people read a story. Yeah. And when I write a good story and I see a good long time on it, which won't sound like a good long time if I tell you what it is, but... No, that's, that's my other job. So oh, okay. I, I, I'm familiar with the metric. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels so good. Yeah, I love absolutely. It. They read, they wrote. You can even tell where people clicked out of the story, you know, clicked yep. on a link out of the story. And if it's way down in the story, it's like, oh, awesome. Thank you yeah, for yeah. reading this whole thing. No, I, that's fantastic. You know, and so, so there, it's a double-edged sword, you know, but... Um, it's a good thing overall yeah. that we know who reads it. It's been very revelatory. Right, right. So uh, after that journey, okay. yeah. Well, go, go ahead. I feel like I interrupted you. Other mm. other things that you're that you're choosing to cover and okay, not, yeah. not choosing to cover. Well, I mean, like I said before, what I really love to write. Uh, I, okay, so yeah, lists and um, news of various sorts, especially if it's like uh, a whole bunch of restaurants are opening Wallen Hills. You know what's mm -hmm. going on there? I mean, whatever. Right. Um, but what I love, and I love more than writing restaurant reviews, is writing about Renee Kerner and her caviar. Yeah, or, human stories. Yeah, about because there are people, uh, and talk about work, you know. Mm -hmm. There are people, the people I cover work so hard. Mm -hmm. They work way harder than I do, you know. And when I find somebody, when there, there are so many people that are so passionate about something. I just today went. I just before I was here, I looked at a went and looked at talked to people about a new restaurant they're opening, and there's it's all, it's all like demoed and empty, yeah. and they're showing me this is where the charcuterie is going to be. You know, that's so much and fun. It, yeah, it really is. It's like it's pure potential at this point, right. and and they're going to make it happen. Yeah, and you know what what makes those people do that is is always fascinating to me, um, or somebody like. Like I wrote a story about the Thunderdome group who owned Bakersfield, uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. Yep. And, they, you know, they've been incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. And they're they're super nice guys, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so I was just really interested. How do you do that? What, what went into this? What's this thing here? Or, 
um, I did a series of history stories about the immigrants who've been come to Cincinnati and what kind of food they brought with them and how that affects how we eat. So I wow. wrote about the, you know, the family behind Gold Star. They have a yeah. fascinating story yeah. or they came from Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, um, or the the bakeries, the, the coffee cakes of Cincinnati. We I don't know if you know this, but we are coffee cake central here. No. I didn't you ever, know if that. you walk into any bakery, they'll be they'll have like like North College Hill Bakery, say, uh -huh. or or Graders or Cervantes or the smaller ones around. They'll have like 10, 12 kinds of coffee cake. That's not other cities don't have That's that. That's not normal. Yeah, it's unnormal. And yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a German thing, but it has more to it than that. So right. anyway, that's what I like writing about, passionate people. Yeah, that's great. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, there are a lot of like things that you would consider the Cincinnati foods right. as a transplant. But there are the ethnic foods, the things that because Cincinnati has so many diverse yeah, cultural histories. Yeah. That I mean, we're a little less di we're di less diverse in other cities. But, yeah. you know, Italian, Italian Cincinnati right. is a thing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of... And I'm, Talked to a lot of interesting Italian people, you know, who had big family, big family dinners on the West right. Side and grew up and went into the food business. Yeah, yeah. How has all this work over time changed your relationship with food? Oh, well, I weigh about 40 pounds more than I did. <laughs> no, that's, how could you not? That's a problem. And my blood sugar is not good. And I really wrestled with that. And mm -hmm. I thought I had it kind of, kind of so that I could do it. Yeah. And I've. It's better, but you know it's it it is a, it is a health hazard to do this job. Yeah, I mean, how many like on an average night, on an average week, like how many nights are you eating out for work? Well, just a few, maybe, and some lunch, or maybe a breakfast, or maybe like eighteen taco places. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's really on the know, other end yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I. You know, and, and, and like, if I'm in a new neighborhood and I think, oh, I've never been here before. Oh, yeah, I remember there's some little place here. I should try that. I'll go try it. Or, uh, you know, I, if there's a new place that has pastries, I'll get the pastries. Right. I don't, it's it's not even so much about how much I eat, but that I will eat everything. Yeah, yeah, because you, know, you kind of have to. I have to, and, and I love everything. But, so anyway, but my relationship to food, I think when I quit doing this job, I'm going to cook very simply. Um, and go out very seldom, mm. you know, um, I, you know, there are people, there are foodies who like, if they go for a vacation, they'll eat at six places a day and they'll have a list and they want to go. I like food to remain in the place that it's meant to be. Mm. And I think food is about, it's about joy mm -hmm. and it's about, uh, nourishment. It's about taking care of people. It's about a you know, it's about a lot of things. It fits into your life. It fits into everybody's life. And I don't want to totally blow that up and just say, um, you know, I still want eating out in a good restaurant to feel like a special occasion. Right. I still want, um, you know, the feeling like, ooh, I could get a croissant if I wanted to be, you know, to still yeah. feel that way. So, so um, you know, it's funny. In some ways, I don't feel like I'm a foodie. Hmm. I'm just a person who likes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a distinction, but you know, I don't know. No, but that's funny though because I uh, there, I would think that there would be no more foodie person. Uh, yeah, no. Than the person who like, does what you do for a living. Like there are people who go camping, go backpacking, and take a French press coffee. I right. would never do that. Right. I would take instant coffee. You yeah. know, if um, you know, if food is served to me that's bad. Mm -hmm. I'll eat it if somebody served it. You know, I mean, like if I'm at a party, people are always like, yeah. oh, are you going to review our food? I'm like, no, I'm not because I didn't pay for the food. And <laughs> I'm happy to eat whatever and you give me. I'm also not at work. I'm also not at work and I'm also not a mean person. Yeah. So, you know, I just think that's funny. Um, you know, and I'll, I mean, there's some things that I really don't want to eat, but, you know, I don't. You know, yeah. if I, I have a this dream that I can go on trips and never eat fast food. But mm. of course I eat fast food, yeah. you know, so. But that's kind of the cultural representation of the of the food critic is the person who steps into the restaurant and the owners are terrified mm. when they come in because they're just looking for somebody I to take down. I love that. I do love you? That. Yeah. Is I that, actually do. Is that your experience? What I love is calling on the phone and saying, it's Polly Campbell from the Inquirer. And they go, oh, yes, ma'am. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, of course I like that. Of course that. we have a table I mean, of for course you. I like that. You know, who doesn't So you don't like even, I mean, I, I was, it was one of my questions. I don't know if at this point you can try to sort of be sneaky and surreptitious or well, if you, if you okay. have a responsibility to let them know. 
Okay, this is how it used to work. Okay. I had no, I did not have my picture in the paper. I had that hat that every single person I ever meet mentions to me. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that hat. Yeah, cool. Like, yeah, I haven't worn that for six years. But, um, and, and I really didn't go out and mingle. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't go write stories about chefs and go to their restaurants. And I just, all I did was show up at the restaurant. Because you didn't want to, I your didn't want them to know who to, I was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, no, I, I literally did not want them to know okay. I was in their restaurant. All right. So I wanted to go in, be very anonymous. This is the classic way to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's fair. You know, you have the same relationship, the same experience that somebody else might have. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. And then later you call them, say, I was in your restaurant, I'm writing a review, can we send a photographer over? And okay. that, that was that. Mm-hmm. I talked to him on the phone. Well, that became untenable. It just, um, I mean, that is the ideal. I still think that's the ideal. Um, so, you know, some people get into writing about food or whatever because they think it's glamorous and they want to know chefs and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like chefs and I like them, but I don't want to be friends with them. That is so not my job. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not what I do. Um, like I said, it's the readers that I'm loyal right. to. Um, Some of that's unavoidable, though, because you've been it doing is. it for a long time. And well, you're so, a yes. person who obviously cares about people. And you're going to develop relationships with people exactly. that are in your field. Yes, but I don't so. invite them to my house. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to. They're all really great people. Yeah, yeah. But the, the point is, I, I, I couldn't do that anymore. Right. I, I had to write these stories. I, you can't write stories sitting at your desk. Yeah. And um, people got to know me, obviously. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then a lot of people really knew me, and some people didn't, and that didn't seem fair. And I felt like by wearing this silly hat in the paper, sure. I was lying. Yeah. You know that I'm an anonymous food critic, but I'm not. You know. Mm-hmm. So I took it off. I threw it into the crowd at an event, and people <laughs> dove for it. <laughs> I, I really do get off on being a minor celebrity, yeah, I gotta tell you. Um, so you should be able to. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so I, my, now my now my photos in the paper, and right. I'm, when I walk into a restaurant, I'm I mean, there's people who are pretty clueless, and not you know fewer people read the paper than they used to, mm-hmm. but um, but that's the deal. But I don't tell them ahead of time I'm coming. Okay. I have never. I I can promise you this. I have never used the phrase. Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> then you've missed many opportunities. I know, but I would really hate myself if no, I, I ever used that. Yeah. So um, so I go in, I order, and then, of course, you know, the inquire. I mean, I pay with my credit card, yeah, which yeah. I used to have them in different names, but I don't anymore. Um, and I, you know, if I was really, really super legit about this, I would be very careful about accepting food that costs money. Mm-hmm. That is almost impossible. Yeah. I mean... I will not let them say, oh, we're going to take care of this. I'm like, no, I'm paying for this. And I, but some chefs um, love to send out little things. Right, and sure. they may do that for everybody. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And if you're going and writing a story about something, of course you're going to taste what they're talking about and they're going to give you, or you're taking photos and then the food would get thrown out if it didn't get eaten. And right. So sometimes I, I feel uh, kind of, that's a very fuzzy line in a way, but I feel pretty good about how I handle is, that. Is, is that um, in the in the world of food writers? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I would imagine there are strong opinions both ways. Well, I th- they're, they're... Is it controversial, mm, your approach? My anonymous, my non-anonymous? Either one. I mean, is this something think, that people argue about in yeah, that Yeah, well, world? lots of people have done a big thing where, like, we're taking off the mask. We're, yeah, we're publishing, yeah. you know, like New York Magazine did it and the Los Angeles Times did it. And, um and then when it comes to um, bloggers and stuff, influencers, oh, yeah, they, that's yeah, what they want yeah, is free yeah. food. Right, you know, right, so right. I, so Why else would I feel you do like it? the, I feel like the bar is very, very low. Yeah, that's true. You know, but um, uh, no, I mean, that's a, that's a very strict thing in journalism in general. You right. don't accept free gifts from people. Yeah. But this is almost, sometimes it's more like an edible press release or, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, so it's. And you can't, you know, people are offended if you don't want to eat their food. I mean, it's rude. Right. Well, yeah. So, you know. And if they're, especially if they're coming out and saying, I know you ordered the thing, the thing you like. Also, here is the thing that we feel like we do well. No, no, that doesn't happen. No? Nobody does that. Okay. Nobody, I'm talking about when I'm writing a story about, you know, uh, I don't know the new Chinese food and right. I go talk to them and they give me Chinese, you know, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. But right. When I'm reviewing a restaurant, I feel like everybody's pretty clear about that. Okay. And there may be some kind of there for a while. There was this weird dance of I'm pretending I don't know you. And uh-huh. I, and I'm pretending that you know me, but don't know me. <laughs> you know. But, uh, no, I, that, that knows. has been very, that has not been a problem usually. Okay. 
So. So you didn't start out to be a journalist. Now you right. are a journalist. You yeah. started out, you got into this because you had a passion for writing, but mm -hmm. writing as a journalist carries a certain set of responsibilities. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you acquaint yourself with those over time? By the amazing journalists that sit near me. Okay. That I've been in the newsroom for all these years and there are the journalists are very clear about what they're doing mm -hmm. and they're very clear about how they feel about they they are a separate breed yeah and i'm constantly thinking oh my god i i, I i'm not worthy you know um i mean to be a really good newspaper reporter you have to have first of all a real understanding of why you're doing it. i mean otherwise you just, you know, you, yeah. got, you, you, you have to have some ridiculous idea about, oh, it's the public's right to know. A sense Which, of mission. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And, that, and that sometimes turns journalists into sort of jerks. Or it seems like they're jerks, you know, but, but it's an important thing. They, you have to know how to write really well. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to do it very quickly. Yeah. You have to be able to uh, set aside your personal feelings and even do things that are kind of assholey sometimes, you know. Uh, I can't do any of those things. Well, I can write. But um, you have to be able to think down to the level of the words in your sentence and at the same time see the big picture of right. what's going on. I am amazed at my colleagues mm -hmm. and um, respect them and am very sad that this is not a profession that is as valued as it should be. Yeah, um, especially now. Yeah. And, um, you know, I when I think about why I do what I do, which is like kind of frivolous, you know. Well, you know, it is when I'm. I was just. It depends thinking. on what you compare it to. Exactly, I mean, but it, I yeah. was, I was thinking about. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start rambling here. But I, so I was, I was in the newsroom on 9/11, mm -hmm. and you know, it sort of became clear that this terrible thing had happened. Everybody else um, kind of sprung into this journalist mode, so they were like, yeah, they were not upset. I mean, of course they were upset. Yeah, but they're working. They're people, but they were working and they were thinking, you know, are there Cincinnati offices in there who who works in the, yep. you know, had to think of a localized way to do it. But, And I'm like just totally mm. so upset, you know. And I was writing a restaurant review that day. It was a Tuesday and it was, that's the latest day I could turn it in. I, mm -hmm. had, I had blown off a deadline. And I said, oh my God, I... I it was the review of the Palace Restaurant at the hotel, Cincinnati mm -hmm. Hotel, which is a very fancy restaurant. And I'm writing all these things about it. And I'm like, who cares? Nobody cares. This is stupid. Why, why am I writing this? Yeah. I asked my editor, you know, can I just not do it? I didn't just, no, you got to get that in. You got to have it scheduled. And I'm like, okay. And I wrote it. And um, uh, I think at some point I, in the in the review, I said something, if you are lucky enough to be eating at this restaurant, okay. just just enjoy it, okay? <laughs> you know, that's all I have to say. That's perspective, <laughs> you know? though. But then, but it is perspective. And I think for uh, several days after that, I thought about it a lot. And I thought, I thought, well, the world sucks. It's, uh, you know, you could die at any time. <laughs> Things are terrible. What can I do about it? Well, at least I can do my job well. Yeah. You know, and I don't know how long that stuck exactly, but it was sort of like, okay, my job in itself isn't very important, but it's my little tiny bit of, yeah, yeah. you know, the rich tapestry of human experience, as I always say. But, so, but, but sometimes those experiences, especially in light of something like that, it, it, it does two things. It shows how frivolous most of what we all do every <laughs> day just is. just passing time. And it shows also how necessary some of that frivolity is right. because it's the respite that we get from exactly. the fact that we could be in that building exactly tomorrow yes. or in front of that bus tomorrow. Right. And that's... I. I always, at some point in writing a review of a restaurant, I always have that feeling like, are we lucky? I mean, a good restaurant yeah. makes you feel that you're lucky. Yeah. You know, I'm so lucky to be here. Oh, that's great. And and yeah. when, um, you know, during the recession and stuff, that was definitely like, okay, Polly, you know, you're you, here's your chance to like bring, make them, make right. them happy for a minute, you know. Right, right. But, you know, so I think that, that mission about your job, mm -hmm. it's partly... For me, it's just, this is something I found out I could do. Yeah. And that's important. And that's what we're here for in a way, you know, is to do something well mm -hmm. or to do what, we, what we're good at. And I also, again, feel like I am um, supporting an important institution. So if mm -hmm. people come to Cincinnati.com to read my reviews and then they 
go over to read something about what's going on in their city or their or their city council or their school board or something that I've done a good thing. Right. Um, I also feel like, you know, restaurants deserve, they, they are such a great part of a well, yeah, vital city. Ten, it's you know? not just tangentially a good thing if yeah. you draw somebody to the newspaper. It's also a good thing because, like you said, that same responsibility that somebody took out a second mortgage. Yeah. And, and you have the opportunity to make people aware of, especially when somebody's doing good work. Yeah, right. Of the good work that they're doing. Yeah. And to make people maybe do better, you right. know. I, I mean, I don't know. But, but they're... Yeah, that's part of it, certainly. Yeah. But restaurants are definitely you know, such an important part of what's going on in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And, and they are just like, um, bringing neighborhoods to life and, um, and just adding delight and joy to people's lives and, yep. and making this city a place people want to live in. Yeah. And as you mentioned earlier, sort of the stories that exist around food, I mean, that's one of those major connection points mm-hmm. in kind of the human experience oh, absolutely. Is, is yes. how we share those experiences. Mm-hmm. When I initially reached out to you about being on the show, you sort of responded back and, and it seemed like you were eager. And now I understand why to talk about that concept of work and finding, uh-huh. finding meaningful work. Do you feel like even though your path has been, or at least was for a while, because you, you've been doing this now for a good long time, but, but prior to that, you had a bit of a meandering. Yes. Has that changed or impacted your idea of your relationship not just to your work, but to work in general, how you think about the worth of work and the dignity of work, if you want to say it that I guess, way. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it, it has to have. Um, I think I grew up in a college town. And my dad was a college professor. And I think at some point what was important to me was that my mother would be able to talk to her friends who whose parents were my friends and say, oh, Polly's doing such and such. And it would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, it's like, Polly worked in a bank. Oh, that's really nice. Like, you know, like, oh, my daughter's in Poland, you know, working on, um, I don't know, whatever. You know, so yeah, it's funny. It's like, and that seems, and I know that happens with me and my children too, you know. Um, I'm very proud of what my children do, and I love to tell people about mm-hmm. it. Um, but, you know, and that's funny because it sounds kind of frivolous and like, you know, care what other people think about you. But I think it does say something about about why why you want to really get the right thing Mm -hmm. you know so that when your mother tells somebody else what you do i don't know (laughs) no i get it i I get that it's like so i i feel like i what it surprised me because obviously i was kind of flighty when i was younger and i quit and i broke up with boyfriends and i moved across the country you know and and i sort of astounded myself by having this job this long, mm. you know, and I've been married for 35 years and, um, I never really thought that was going to happen. Do you still have this conce- conception of yourself as flighty though? Uh, uh, a little bit. <laughs> be- <laughs> no, this is I funny do. to me. I was having a conversation with my, with my partner earlier today where we you're talking about like how these conceptions of ourselves change and don't change <laughs> over time and how in the, in the last episode of the show, I was talking to Brandon Irvin about, um, the idea, a lot of people go through a midlife crisis because they're, they're carrying the conception of themselves from adolescence or from childhood right. into the middle of their life and never, never step back. And say, I'm not that person anymore. Yeah, and yeah. to say, and I'm not bound by those, by those promises or by those motivations uh-huh. that got me to do the thing. Yeah. Here you are sort of giving them the picture of yourself as flighty when well, you've been I- married for 35 <laughs> years and you've been doing this well, one job for so I, long. Yeah. It's just, I'm, I mean, it's not a critique. I'm just saying no, it's funny no. how we never let oh, ourselves we never off let the go hook of that. that. Right. I mean, I have a very, you know, I've got this very, this birth order thing. Oh. I've got five siblings who are all like brilliant. And, uh-huh. um, you know, and other people look at my job and they're just like, oh, my God, you have the best job in the city. And I'm like, yeah, I do, I guess. You know, yeah. Um, not really. But, you know, I, I mean, I always think, oh, yeah, but I really should be writing about global warming. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, really, it's like yeah. I, it may I may have. And sometimes I worry that I've hung on to this job because I love it when people go, oh, you're that you're you're Polly Campbell. And I'm like. And that makes me feel like weird about myself yeah. like, that I like that because, you know, when you're a kid, you're not supposed to, you know, whatever. But I won't go into No, I, I get it. I have been in therapy, just so you know. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's, but you just, I, I, I'll tell you what I've learned about work is that everybody's an imposter. Nobody mm-hmm. knows, thinks that they're great at what they do. Um, that 
it's you just do it as best you can and you try to make it your own. Um, you're not just following orders. You're like, you know, I think I've been here long enough that I can say no to that and I'm going to do this thing instead, right. you know, and, and that's nice. But even in other ways, people can make their work their own, I think. And I you think learn so much about yourself. Yeah, work. absolutely. No, I think that's it. I could probably take what you just said and sort of make that the masthead statement of the podcast because, yeah. I, because that's my... I think that idea, so many people start out thinking there's a path. Right. If I miss the path, right. I'll have screwed it all up. Exactly. Not And not that true. idea of just make a choice and then make that choice the right one. And if you can't, then make a different choice. Right. Yeah. And you might be stuck somewhere for a while, you know, mm-hmm. but but you could, you're in charge of your own life. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard, but... Well, and I think people also take, you know, you started off by saying that when people ask you, how do I become a, a, a food writer? You say, well, are you writing? Yeah, right. And and that can be for a lot of people who are thinking, I'd like to be doing something else, anything else. The path from here to there is endless. Right. I'll never get there. Yeah, right. But the minute that you write like the first or second article, the minute that you start moving in that direction, yeah. it's also not two distinct points on a line yeah it's this continuum where right. oh now i'm doing five percent of the thing that i love mm-hmm. tomorrow i might be doing ten percent right and maybe in a couple of years i'll be doing ninety percent but and it might not be the thing i thought that i'm right not how i want to do it. like i, I thought i wanted that. to you know be a chef yeah that was that was a very flighty thought but um but that's not what i'm doing but still right. you know i'm circled back around like no food really matters to me yeah so. have you uh you said you have daughters yeah have you, how, how do you t- talk to them about work? Have you had conversations with them about these sorts of things? Oh, yeah. So, you know what's so great these days for them is they get these automatically, they have internships. I, when I moved to New York City and worked in, as, in a book publishing company, I don't think I knew, I didn't know how to transfer a phone call, yeah. you know, and I, I was, you know, but, um, Oh, God, they're so much better educated than I was. Mm. They're so much. They went to Wallet Hills. They had tons of homework every night, which I thought was just terrible. But, boy, do they know how to get through a pile of homework. Yeah, you know? my kid's in the middle of that right yeah. now. Yeah, and um, and they, they've they had more sort of guidance and, and mentorship and opportunities than I ever had. Um, I was just figuring it all out really totally on my own, you know. What do you think their What do you think their idea though is about? Do they think about work in a way that's fundamentally different than you did at that age? Yeah, they really want. They really to them, and I don't quite know how they got this. They wanted work that that they could say made a difference in the mm. world. So mm. one of them works in energy efficiency. One of them works in um, urban planning, and she just does bike trails, you know, and, and whatever it was. And, you, and I think I see both of them get a little frustrated because they feel like the part of what they want to have happen that yeah. they get to do is so small. Right. Um, but I, I, in some ways I don't feel like my experience is that useful to them. They're on, they're so, I don't know. They kind of know what they're doing in a way that I, I don't know. I mean, I, they're amazing. <laughs> but it sounds, it also sounds like, um, I don't know that you, that your conception of the work that they're doing is that they have a, a level of certainty. Yeah. That maybe they don't have. Yeah, maybe they don't. That don't maybe know. they don't have that <laughs> that clarity. Well, I know my older daughter is struggling with her job right now, yeah. but I think she still knows she's she's not going to just. I mean, that's quit been, and get a fa- high paying corporate right. job. You know. No, that's been one of the yeah. major lessons of doing the show is after talking to. I, I think your episode will be episode forty eight. So mm, wow. ne- nearly fifty people about their work and some some people who did the thing went to undergrad and yes. graduate school and they got the, the PhD path. and did the yeah. path and right. are just as riddled by self doubt and imposter syndrome. And did I make the right thing? Is this really what I want to be Funny. doing? And I'm like, my God, but yeah. the way that we beat ourselves up though. Oh, I know it's crazy. around all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big non-believer in self-improvement and setting goals. <laughs> I do not believe in setting goals. I think those are just things that make you feel bad when you don't complete them. Oh, yeah, I hear that. (laughs) But anyway, yeah, I know what you mean. It is so funny. And there's so many other ways. I mean, you can't not work. You got to have the health insurance. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and and there's been times I thought, maybe I should try something else. You know, I've got other talents. Maybe I should go on to something else. I'm like, you know, you've 
no, I think you better stay. I think you'd better stay because I couldn't think of what the next step on this particular path would be. Right. Well, that's unless what the New York Times called me one yeah. day, which probably is not going to happen. <laughs> and um, but yeah, there's always oh man, it's it takes up so much of your time. You know? What do you what do you do when you're not doing this? I mean, obviously, food was both your profession and your passion to mm-hmm. some degree. Are there other things now um, that have to fill that place, or is it still kind of that way for you? Oh, there's other things I I I wish people sort of understood. I I I, I mean nothing nothing much really. I well, love to read. I love to hike, mm-hmm. and I love to swim in cold water. And I <laughs> and um, I like to I don't know. Those are kind of the things I like well, to no, do. Well, no, the reason I ask is because very often when somebody turns their their passion into their profession, then over yeah. time what ends up happening is they... They lose them both. They yeah, they the kind passion. of lose them both. Yeah, that just becomes work now. Well, it's... Food fun- is different that way. Well, yeah. It's funny because I remember when I got the job, I thought, um, that might happen. Mm-hmm. But really, I had never been a big diner out. I never had the money for it. Mm. And so I thought, you know what? This isn't going to ruin something that I love. Because what I really love is is sort of how food fits into people's lives, and I love cooking, and I love having parties, and I, oh, that's my other hobby, going to parties. And um, I like your hobbies. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, I somehow it's it, it's not. I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll always go out to eat whether I have this job or not. But um, mm-hmm. it hasn't ruined it at all, really. That's good. Yeah, that's good to hear. I mean. So is there, and I think we're probably, you know, nearly out of time. Um, is there anything that from your experience coming sort of back to the work that you do that you could say, if if somebody said, how can I have the best experience that I can in a restaurant? Are there things that you have learned that that don't have to do with the place that have to do with your, your orientation about how you bring yourself to something that can make it as enjoyable as possible. Just be nice to your server. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't see how it would be fun. I can't stand going out with people who, yeah, like... Bark at the waiter. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, and I also am not the server. I am not the customer who is like, can I get the avocado on this? And, you know, I just... Because I want to do... I just I only eat what they say I should. Yeah, you know, yeah. what they put on the menu. And I, you know, unless you're unless you have some true food problem, food mm-hmm. allergy or whatever, just eat what they give you. I <laughs> that, I just, you know, I just feel like I don't, I don't get, I am, I don't yak with a server. I don't tell them jokes or, you know, like I just, cause I respect their time mm-hmm. and I'm not that interested in them as people. You know what I mean? Like they're just serving me. And, but <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that's why you're you're, right. you're not there to for a conversation. Right. That's you're not what there it's all for about. What they're right? offering, you know? yeah, yeah. But you know, I like to look them in the eye and and let them know that I'm not going to be a problem to them. And yeah. um, and I think it's, I mean, I think you should always read the restaurant reviews first, of course, um, and kind of think about what you're going to order. I mean, it's fun when you can, you know, you you. Going with an You're idea. Going with, yeah, like, I can't wait to try this thing. I hear it's their best thing. Right. Or, um, I mean, what else is there to do? You just sit down and eat what they give you. Well, no, but, <laughs> but what you're describing, I, I get it. I, um, what you're describing is, uh, to put it very simply, a sort of relationship of trust. Of saying, yeah. I'm here. Right. I trust you to treat me. I, you know, there are a few meals that I can name you know, put on one hand as like the highlights of my dining experience. Yeah. And all of those would have in common feeling like I was, um, like I was on, in some way sort of entertained, like taken right. care of. Yeah, like, taken care of. Yeah. yeah. And you, and you can't be taken care of if you won't let yourself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I, I don't know. People act weird in restaurants and yeah. I just, um, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. Right, right, exactly. You know, yeah. and I mean, like, I don't even send food back, mm-hmm. which some people say, well, why don't you send it back and see if they can make it better? I'm like, no, they had their chance. Sorry. Right. Um, fair. But. Um, Do you give restaurants second chances? Uh, no, no. No. They just get one. Yeah. Right on. No. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I, uh, I don't have time to go back. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll go once. I used to go twice for mm-hmm. every restaurant, and now I usually just go once. But 
if I, something weird happened, I, I might go back and sure. see what the second time was like. But if I if I've done it, I've written the review, I really it wasn't what they wanted. It's going to be years before I get back there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I might think about a story that they could participate in or something. Um, sure. So, but yeah, it doesn't work. It's just it just the nature of the thing. Yeah, and especially there's, a, there's like eight new restaurants right. in from the last six months that are still on my list of places to go. So yeah. yeah. Uh, what are what is um, and this is just a food question. What's the what's the trend that's happening right now? What's the thing that we're all going to be eating in three months? And well, I hope you like cauliflower. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. Is that what I'm getting? I don't from know if you've on? noticed, but it's everywhere. <laughs> um, no, every restaurant is going, not every restaurant is a small plates restaurant, mm-hmm. but every restaurant wants to be, and I just realized this is probably the trend, the word is mm-hmm. convivial. Hmm. So they want you to um, share things, pass things around the table. They want to want you to, sh- to, you know, try a bunch of stuff, not just appetizer, entree, dessert, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is fine, but it's hard to do correctly, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Sometimes I feel like, oh, sorry, I know we're reaching the end, but. um, Sorry, go ahead. I wrote this once. It's like women's clothes, um, they they make, there's a number of possible, oh, oh, uh, capri pants, that's what Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. You buy women's clothes, pants, and they're short now, right? So. And I, I'm tall, so and I don't like wearing capri pants. And I'm like, they just do that because it's easier. And now they tell us it's a fashion. <laughs> it's what you have to right? wear. <laughs> and I, <laughs> it's not fashion. It's cheaper for you. And it's less trouble. So is that they the can, cauliflower? <laughs> yeah, no. That is, the, that is the small plates analogy. Okay. All right. It's like, it's much easier. Right. And in some ways, it feels easier. You just send it out when it's done. Yeah. Because, and then you say, no, this is the way, this is good. I'm like, that is just capri pants. You know, you do it right. <laughs> and, or, or buttonless cardigans. See, I get yeah. that, though. My, my yeah. dream, and, and my partner told me the one thing that is the deal breaker with us is if I ever open a restaurant. Mm. She, will, she will leave me. She doesn't want to have anything oh, to do with please that. don't do it. No, but I, I, there, was a, there was a place in Astoria, Oregon that I wish I could remember the name Ooh, of. Nice. And you go in, and they're making two things. Yeah. Which one do you want? And we're making them until they're gone. Yeah. And it's going to be amazing. I love it's that. It's going to be mind blowing. Yeah. But we're not going to screw around and we're not going to customize things. Right. This is what it is. And we're making, you know, yeah. and, oh, sorry, we ran out of the thing. Do you want yeah. the other thing? Yeah. But it's going to be mind blowing. Yeah. That'd I be a love fun to restaurant do. to make. Can you, can you cook mind blowing food? I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty, pretty good cook. cook. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> no, but, she will leave me. I'm never going to get to do it. It's not an option. Yeah, people ask me, are you ever going to open a restaurant? Oh, my God, I have the best job in the restaurant industry. Yeah, why would you think you I would? Yeah. Up? So, no, yeah. I, I am so grateful to people who open restaurants. I mean, I, I, I do think they're nuts, but um, it's hard. Right on. Um, but I. I'm really glad they, that they do it. <laughs> well, you, you, you might just have the best job in town. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to hear you talk about it, Polly, and a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for oh, you're your welcome. time and talk. your insights. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thanks. This episode of The Distiller was recorded live at Mominum Coffee and Wine, 3128 Coleraine Avenue in Camp Washington, Cincinnati. Thanks to owners Austin and Tony Ferrari and their mom, Teresa, for making us a space on a Friday afternoon. You can learn more, see photos of our time there, and find links to their website and social media pages on our website at thedistillerpodcast.com. If you live in Cincinnati or you are just passing through, be sure to check out Mominum for top-notch coffee, wine, pastries, all the good stuff. They're open until 6 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and until 9 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. And whenever you stop in please be sure to say hi and that you heard it on The Distiller when you do. And thanks, of course, to my guest, Polly Campbell, for sharing her unique work and perspective with us. Polly's obviously an icon here in Cincinnati. It was a joy to meet and to talk with her. And you can read her wonderful writing in the Cincinnati Inquirer or online at Cincinnati.com. And of course, you can link there from our website at thedistillerpodcast.com. The Distiller is produced, recorded, and hosted by me, Brandon Dawson. Our show is mixed by Justin Golden. Logo designed by Scott Ryan Design, and our videos are by Mike Helm of Minute Moments Pictures. You can find The Distiller wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can listen and download every episode at thedistillerpodcast.com, where you'll also find links, photos of the guests, and a map of every one of our show locations. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please tell somebody about it. Follow, like, and share our posts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to help us make more episodes, just click the Become a Patron button on our website for more information. Thank you so much to our existing patrons for helping us out. And finally, please do take a second to rate and review The Distiller wherever you listen. It really does make a difference. Until next time, I'm Brandon Dawson. Thank you for listening to The Distiller. Bye-bye.